In this video, we'll take a look at what tools there are in Playbook to help you do your rolling wave prep and the rolling wave planning. So to start with, we'll take a look at Stephen Covey's four quadrants. And in quadrant one, we have importance and urgency, where things are important and urgent, like fighting a fire. Um, in our world, this would be our critical tasks. All of the tasks on the project are important. The critical ones have more urgency because if we unnecessarily delay them, we unnecessarily uh, delay the project. But similar to putting out a fire, we don't want to, uh, we want to avoid creating an, any unnecessary rework on the critical path tasks. So that means we don't just hurry up and get them done, but build in errors and omissions. We want to take our time and put the fire out completely. We want to take our time and do the best we can to not create any uh, unnecessary rework on, on the critical path. Also, this is where the, the daily huddles are. You know, we sort of manufacture urgency. We want the huddles to be short, 15 minutes or less, uh, to the point, you know, create value. But we don't want them to labor on and on. Quadrant two is the is the big opportunity quadrant. This is where we build or create value. And basically we tend to spend too little time in quadrant two. We'd all like to have more quality time in life to, to you know, spend more time with our family, friends, et cetera. So this is the quadrant where there's, things are important, but they lack urgency, like sharpening your tools or maintaining your tools. If you've ever done any chainsawing, um, you, you know that if you don't take time, invest time to sharpen your blade or to replace it every once in a while, it gets dull and the productivity drops in, uh, dramatically and you're not able to really cut much wood after a while. So car maintenance, where we have to schedule time to take the car in, get the oil change, check the air pressure, et cetera, and the tires, et cetera. This is something we have to, we have, to have some discipline around because we don't want to end up in, um, quadrant one broken down on the side of the road. Exercise, same kind of thing. Uh, there's no urgency. We, we have to manufacture the urgency. We schedule it in because we know it's important for us, good for our health. Our yellow tasks, the normal criticality tasks, uh, no, they just don't have as much urgency, but certainly they're important. And last but not least would be planning, kind of the point of this slide. Planning rarely has urgency. Sometimes we fail a test or something happens late in the in the project and we find ourselves in ourselves in crisis mode and we are trying to figure out what it is we're going to do what's our plan forward we get in the conference room and we you know we go through that activity but rarely does it get captured in the project plan but that's one form of planning and then there's quadrant 3 which is sort of where things Aren't, aren't important, but there's a sense of urgency. So some of the phone calls and emails that you might get during the day fall into this category. So these tend to be um, cause interruptions, they're uh, distractions, they break your concentration, they break your flow from focusing on uh, the, the work that you're trying to get done. So you might consider turning off the notifications. If you have your these notifications on and they pop up, you might consider turning those things off so that you get more, you know, concentrated focus time. And then quadrant four is the not important, you know, not or not urgent kind of quadrant. That's that's where we just relax, et cetera. And that's all fine. The point is quadrant two where we get into talking about creating value um, and all these things basically require some discipline, car maintenance, exercise, planning. There's discipline involved. And how do you create discipline? Now, basically, we have to find a way to create discipline. So we, we plan to plan, which means we're basically investing time to update the plan and to, and to, and to, and to go back to planning mode rather than working on the tasks because we – believe that the payback is going to be greater than the investment of time. And the only way that we've really found successfully to implement this is, is to create a visible task, to create
create a task for each of the summary task owners every week to kind of like get in there and uh, do your maintenance, you know, revisit the plan, have a look at it, do the updates, okay? Um, so this should be a shared task. In other words, it's not a meeting task. It's a task with multiple resources as a work task. And you can assign it to however many folks that you need to and schedule it for the day before your rolling wave planning meeting so that everyone does their prep in advance. And summary task owners should mark this copy, their copy of the shared task complete after they've done the prep work just like any other task. Um, so first, here in the game plan, um, if you're a summary task owner, you might consider using the summary filter. It's a very powerful tool. Here I can see, because we've been capturing the names of the summary task owners in parentheses, I can clearly see which things are my responsibility and which things aren't. So if I wanted, if I wanted to just limit what's showing in the game plan, to just those things that I own, maybe I'm Bob, I could limit the amount of stuff that's in my view. I don't have to look at everything. I can just look at those things that I'm basically um, accountable for. So that's one thing. Another thing that you can do, and we'll turn that back on, is you could use the resource filter. Using this, you this is broken down by, by groups and uh, your administrator, organizes resources and groups. You could say, well, I want to look at just the things assigned to me, I'm Bob. And now you see that if Bob's one of the resources assigned to the task, then that's all that he's actually going to see. So that'll, that'll reduce the amount of clutter that, that he needs to view at one time. You might consider as well, though, because you'll see there's some miscellaneous milestones, et cetera that when doing this, you might also turn off all the different task types and only show individual task types. That's the most concise, consolidated view that, that you can generate for yourself. But here, now you can pretty easily see where the overlaps are for Bob on any given day and kind of when he's planning to do the work and he can more easily, effectively manage his workload. So there's those two things. Then also in the dashboard, there's a couple of tools. And we looked at some of this already, but just to kind of go back to it, um, there's a resource utilization graph and a table. And as a summary task owner, again, I want to run this analysis for maybe the next few weeks for just the resources that I'm planning on utilizing. So we'll look out, let's say, beginning of next week. We'll go out oh, approximately four weeks. And I don't really need to include the templates projects. I might include everybody. You know, maybe maybe I'm you know I could cherry pick if I really need to or want to, but I could just otherwise just include everybody that are in these groups. You probably don't want to include sandbox life cycles, and this will give you a, a kind of a lump sum indicator of loading for the resources that you're planning to utilize during that time frame. And it says, in this case, Bob, for the time frame that we're analyzing, there's 160 total hours. And he's loaded currently, he's overloaded, uh, certainly. He's got 162.25. So the color coding in the table is zero to 50% capacity is green, 50 to 70% is yellow, 70 to 100 is orange, and over 100 is red. So really overloads start at orange. You know, if you think your availability is really maybe only five hours per day, well, five divided by eight is 62.5 or 0.625, which means 62.5%. So once you're going yellow to orange, you're you're really probably starting to get overloaded. You've got too much work on your plate for the amount of time available. Um, anyway, so that's how you, you know you can in interpret this, and then you can drill down into the various projects and look at the different summary tasks, et cetera, to see where the loading's coming from. Maybe an opportunity to hand some work off to another individual. But the table doesn't show you the distribution of the work over that period of time, and that's what the utilization graph is really for. 
So we'll run the same basic analysis, same time frame, starting next week, going out a few weeks, or four weeks in this case. We'll make it an apples to apples comparison. Um, in this case, though, I'm going to just analyze Bob since he, I've identified him as my most overloaded person. And when I run this analysis, now I'll see the distribution of the work. This is um, summing all the tasks that are assigned to Bob on different days of the week. So the 1st of October, 2nd of October, this is all planned work for him. And again, if you think your availability is about five hours a day, well, he's grossly overloaded this week and next week. So the opportunity is to to uh, reassess what's in the plan, what's planned for him, and to try to either offload some of this work to other people, or if that's not possible, to start pushing the, the lower priority work farther to the right so that we, we keep the focus on the higher priority work earlier, we kind of level out the loading for the next number of weeks, um, and you know that's part of our goal here is to make sure that we've got reasonable expectations about what we can and can't do it. and reasonable means that we can do that work in a reasonable amount of time. So with that, that is uh, those are the basic tools that are available in playbook. Just thanks for watching.